everyone, this is the Mad Salvi letting you know that unless things are proven with Twitter posts and stuff like that and actual, have actual proof behind it, treat everything in this thing as a theory. I will mark try to mark certain things as news and theory and everything like that to kind of let you guys understand, but also, you know, use a critical mind. And I hope you do enjoy. Hoger is uh, someone that I am not really against when it comes to anything that's going on there. Uh, it reminisces about Selene. This was nice. It's nice to see. Let's go for the clip and then I'll see you on the other side. What a lovely night for trouble. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's such a good line. Holy shit. Who? Now, I can still hear the Selene in that. Don't get me wrong. I can still hear the Selene. What a lovely night for trouble. Because she has such a unique voice as it is. Yes, she does. Um, just the, what a lovely night for trouble especially when she like started singing like, especially when she one. did like disney cover songs god damn her voice was so suited to that because it was like such a cute little girly kind of voice and then she did like the singing songs where she was so happy oh god gotta miss the laugh the laugh was amazing first stream i ever did with selene was with selene and albin doing um fuck um apex legends literally the only time i've ever played <laughs> Apex Legends. But yeah, I just remember that whole stream was just Alvin and Selene bullying me. And that is good. It's good to see that they are willing to, uh, like, Fogger is willing to reminisce about a past talent, even though Nidhi Sanji would like you to forget that they even exist and make them believe that they're unmarketable and all that type of stuff. Fogger really liked collabing with Selene and had stated he would join any collab request she sends out without hesitation. I'm glad that Fogger sounds like one of the few good ones. Nice of him to say that. Hopefully he leaves so that he can collab with Doki. That's going to be the only chance, like, because since uh, Nidhi Sanji, unlike Hololife, doesn't let you keep your uh, PL. Like Hololife, like, for example, if a VTuber like myself were to join Hololife, they would give me a new persona to be in Hololife, like Holostars in this case, because Hololife is purely girls. So Holostars in this case. And then I could still continue doing my news stuff, my news broadcast here, uh, in order to continue doing this, if this is what I wanted to do, as long as I keep doing some stuff with them and fulfill my contract obligations with them. And that is a good way to be. That is a better way to act because that breeds loyalty. That creates loyalty. Like I would be fiercely loyal to a company that lets me keep my what I'm doing right now because I worked hard for this. And it, of course, that hard work would be what would get me into that agency. But I'd be super happy when they keep me in here and they let me keep this because that means that also, in case if I have to graduate from what I'm doing with them, etc., I can come back to this. I can stay with this. Unlike Nidhi Sanji, where you have to let go of it, like at least graduate or hiatus or whatever you want to call it. You cannot be streaming at the same time with any other any other uh, content creation. You can't do that with YouTube or you Twitch or anything like that. They will get you for that in the contract. And yeah. So Fogger sounds like one of the good ones. This is why we like Fogger. This is why I love Fogger. He's one of the nine or ten people who I wholeheartedly trust in Nidhi Sanji. He's great, and I'm glad he's not afraid to talk about Selene, of course. And I always say, as I always say, yes, I have huge issues with Nidhi Sanji as an agency. I have huge issues with their, their upper management. I hate their upper management. I hate their management style. I hate the way that they, they mistreat their talents, that they make their talents feel like they are worth less. So if you support Fogger, whether it be, you know, with Super Chats or whatever, I am not going to judge you for that. I am I am fully believe and people can do as they please. I am going to give you a multitude of reasons why not to do that. I'm going to give you a multitude of reasons about why it's not good because it supports Nidhi Sanji. But if you still want to give your support to your Oshi on my channel over here in my community, you will not. You're very welcome to be here and watch everything. You're very welcome to put out your opinions, whether you like Nidhi Sanji or not. And I will never mistreat you for that. I will never denigrate you for that. I will never say you're horrible for supporting your Oshi because an Oshi is a very personal thing. And yes, I always try to mention this and I always try to mention that harassment is never welcome in my community, whether harassing Nidhi Sanji people who love Nidhi Sanji, who watch my stuff. I have people in my comment section who love Nidhi Sanji and wish they were better. They're very welcome and they feel welcome here. And I'm glad that they do. They've let me know that they feel welcome here. And I'm very glad that I was able to create a space where both sides can have a healthy discussion and not throw S at each other and not try to harm each other, but just have a healthy discussion, which is what I try to create. This is more of a question to all of you. Uh, do you think that Niji could have become a VTuber agency to beat uh, 
Hollow Life, I mean in numbers and size, they beat Hollow Life. In the income, they do beat Hollow Life because they're like twice as big when it comes to VTubers. But like, let's say EN. Do you think it could have been EN powerhouse where Hollow Life would have just been left behind in the dust, like very, very far in the dust? If, uh, you know, people like uh, uh, Riku Tazumi would have left or, you know, Riku Tazumi would have left everything to the board of directors or things like that. Um, do you think personally that that would have made them better? I think if they had changed their management style, if they had had a better management style than what they do right now with EN and, you know, not letting go of ID, which was actually growing in popularity, not letting go of Korea, which had a chance, not letting go of India, which, you know, they didn't even give a chance to. That was a cultural thing, of course, because I'm not sure if VTubers could have done very well in India overall, but because uh, I don't see any other really, I haven't seen any other large Indian VTubers out there. There may be very, various small ones, but not any large ones. Um, if they hadn't given up on all those and actually tried a better management style, they, in my opinion, they would have been a powerhouse, someone that, you know, would not have been made fun of as much as they are now and would have been, you know, a, a, something to be reckoned with. In fact, I thought it was the Niji era would arrive at the end of 2019 in Japan, keys in the eye and others would disappear. Uh, Dot Live, which sisters saw as the biggest enemy at the time, would collapse with fatal damage. Remains a weak agency and Hollow Life would be weak. The reality, however, was that Hollow Life made a furious leap forward in 2020 and began quickly to become the industry leader because they were very, very, very picky on who they chose. They were very picky on who they got for their stuff. <clears throat> and um, they also heavily, heavily marketed things. And that's another thing that helped them in the long run. In other words, Niji had made the wrong choice twice. If only they had done the right things, they would be like Hollow Life right now. That is. Of course, wild speculation, but seeing how Hollow Life was able to do it, if Niji had followed suit and done the exact same type of things, done similar things to keep up with uh, what Hollow Life was doing and seeing them as a threat that they were to uh, further existence, to, uh, you know, long term existence, then maybe, maybe, just maybe, uh, Niji Sanji would have been much larger. They, they cannot, they can't, they can, but not, they can but not with a mass hiring strategy. You can attract the best and brightest talents, but if they need time to grow, they do need time to grow. And for the audience to know what the lever can offer. Yeah, their whole mass grow, like mass bringing in, like in some cases in a year, 40 or more talents or whatever, it is too much. Virtual Talent Academy is a good thing that they created, but they're still having too high of a debut rate, in my opinion, for what uh, they should have. This is a cute little thing that someone has done. Uh, I believe they did it for slash VT over there in Ret in 4chan. Uh, some people do some positive things in slash VT. Some people just, you know, troll and bait and do all that flame wars and stuff, that kind of stuff. It is uh, chaotic, as we all know, on 4chan. But this is something nice. It's basically making it like a little daily newsletter of basic things that have been happening. As we know, Fallen Shadow, Shonda was banned from Twitch. I covered that a few days ago. When it first came out, I covered it. Uh, 3D for two long time Niji JP talents. I covered that as well. The 3D for both of them. Uh, interview with Fighting Game YouTuber. Haven't covered this one. And the stream ending due to crime in the neighborhood. That is also something that is is a big thing. Uh, Cali Calico. I covered that one recently. Uh, Chinami Sorin apparently is a uh, Street Fighter uh, player, uh, VTuber, whatever you want to call it. And um, they are very into fighting games. This is a nice little thing to have. That's why I'm mentioning it, putting it here, because it is cool to see. Someone, you know, with now the media that we have now of all, you know, YouTube and digital and things like that, like you're seeing right now, they try to go back a little bit to the way the legacy media was with newsletters and things like that with, a, you know, synopsis in, and uh, those things. So, of course, pushing that forward to whoever's doing this, keep doing it. If you see my stuff, if you don't see my stuff, you probably won't because I'm not that big. But if you do see it, keep going forward, keep doing this, keep enjoying, uh, you know, the grind enjoying making this stuff right here it says i didn't make it someone on vt did just reposted it here here about the uh the red rum on cali calico's place there's been similar crimes near my neighborhood but i can't imagine how petrifying that it would have a, a red rum happen right next to you uh, i hope she'll be okay the bit the big risk with that is um if it goes to court that she was right next door and uh the person you know doesn't get uh convicted of it which i highly doubt they run the risk of you know getting hurt either by the person's associates if they were bad enough to cause that you know person's associates could hurt them you know that type of thing it's risky um same twitch that have a subgenre of, of bat stream we stream and ethought yeah basically the people are, are reacting to uh to shondo fallen shadow and you know the fact that there's newspaper news editions 
always interesting to see. Love putting it out there. That's why I have this here. Of course, treat this as someone's opinion uh, on Brave Group. Brave Group is uh, a basically, basically like a venture capitalist or an investment group in VTubing in this point. It is basically like a media conglomerate, a media group picking up uh, things like Vispo, which they picked up, which was very popular, and then they sold off doing things like that. So this person is wondering, uh, you know, they've been expanding into foreign countries a lot and doing it fast. They're launching branches and newcomers one after another around the world while these branches are still in the small bud stage. I think they're doing that a lot because, you know, investment, investment, investment. And also you have three or four different groups under you. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're all Brave Group and they're, they are doing, you know, everything under Brave Group in the sense that it's Brave Group doing four or five different groups at once. It are new, you know, new VTuber um, debuts at once. And as each agency, Globy, you know, V4 Mirai, et cetera, the ones that they have under them, doing it independently. Because remember, it's not like they are a Nidhi Sanji or they are a Hololive. They are more of an investment firm, more of a venture capitalist, or even you want to call it a media group where they have media uh, agencies underneath them that have it. You know, like Rupert Murdoch's thing and other people in, in the more in the IRL sphere, they have something like that. It's more like a, you know, large umbrella corporation for them. Uh, it says, I fear their moves are too hasty to survive, just like Niji, which is disrupting one another uh, before it reaches the stage. And because of the holding style cluster independent system, almost no interaction between groups, that that is something that maybe they should fix at some point. It doesn't seem like they interact very much between each other. But that is also, remember, since they are more a holdings group, they let each agency work independently of each other and not boss them around. And it's just like, you know, you need investments, you need money for this, or you need uh, the okay, then this is what we're going to be doing for you. We're going to be helping you manage your stuff a little bit better than maybe you had before. Give you the monetary support maybe you didn't have before to do new projects and things like that. So that is the reason why I think they're not uh, interacting with each other. Not so much that they don't, they're not allowed to, or that uh, Brave Group isn't doing it themselves. Brave Group has allowed each group to have their own independence. My success they've had is Vispo, which then they sold, um, and they sold to Vivian and Aogiri, you know, basically Vispo they acquired and Aogiri they sold. So my mistake there. Brave should analyze a bit more. People are saying, thing about Vispo is that the group had already been successful on its own before it was acquired. And that's why it was acquired by Brave Group. And saying Brave's only success was Vispo is kind of a yes and no, because all that Brave Group did was buy Vispo and get ownership of the group and give them, you know, investment. And there's people are, are bringing back the past failures of Gameboo. It's absorbed into numerous groups. The first place Vispo had already been established is its popularity before joining Brave Group. And then Brave Group did not make Vispo popular. The name Brave Group is not powerful enough to attract customers. On the contrary, a few old VTuber fans still distrust the group. But as I said, since it is independent, like they do allow independence within their group of other agencies. Uh, that is where I'm like, well, let's see what the agencies do themselves. And I don't treat them as being someone under Brave Group. I just treat them as, you know, Globy is independent of Brave Group, even though they technically aren't. Term Brave Group isn't exactly a very popular name. Uh, not to mention all these cookie cutter VTuber groups are releasing our own identity crisis, trying to find a place in the community, which happens a lot. It does happen a lot. While well, having to compete with many other of their own sister groups. Problem with Brave Group is that they're uh, lackadaisical, see zero presence from them despite being a huge VSPO fan. I think they all just expect to invest in many VTuber groups, hoping that one gets big enough. That's kind of the issue that I have with Brave Group personally, is that it's great that they're giving an influx of money. It's great that their investment is bringing that influx to uh, places like Globy and other ones that maybe were too small to get that investment separately. But if you're very, if you're a little too hands off with the management, you could end up having what new GEN does, where they're extremely hands off and um, they start failing, and that's bad for your investments overall. If you're looking for investments in your investment firm, then uh, a little bit more management probably would help. Doki Bird and the Dragoons, by extension, keep winning. It says Korean Dragoons, there will be a special collaboration with V Square, a new space hosted by Latte Cinema dedicated to V VTubers. It is opening at the end of July in South Korea. Maybe a cafe collab is in the horizon. Stay tuned for more details. And here's V Square, where we have them saying, the sixth collaboration IP revealed with the opening of V Square, legendary thief with overflowing energy and excellent FPS skills. A bounty hunter leading the Dragoons uh, appears wearing a hanbok. Welcome to Tomato Farm. It's Doki Bird. Ah, this is their, their uh, traditional where the handbook uh i did not know what it was i cannot say that i know a lot about korean culture but that is very cute on doki bird and there we go she's so adorable a lot of people um let's go dragoons let's see what this person says here uh this is crazy this is a dream this is real so a lot of people are having good happy 
uh, responses to what Doki Bird's doing because, of course, a Doki Bird has had a lot of bad situations in the past, as we all know from February 15th, and she has been doing so, so well, thanks to herself and the community. Because, yes, the community has, you know, uh, come around her and, you know, joined her and everything like that, but she has had a never ending grind to make her company which you know she has her corporation and her brand grow as much as possible she's been non-stop tireless in the wanting to grow everything and everyone's like guys this is my kamiyoshi lotus similar to the chocolate company what let's go base tokyo looks so cute in korean in traditional costume let's freaking go this outfit is so cute want to see more art of it doki in the handbook um oh wait you use the other artist logo actually pretty smart for the more cutesy look I'll go there, maybe not as soon as it opens, but as early as I can. A lot of people are very happy. Very cool uh, PNG. It is a very cool PNG. It's very cool that this just happened. And um, as of 3.52 in the morning of this morning, this is uh, news for Doki Bird. Let's see what people are responding to down here. Everyone wants to collab with Doki Bird. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if some Doki Bird merch at Aldi at this time next year. Really is crazy how the floodgates opened when she returned. Also... Let's give a lot of credit to Doki Bird. It's not just like, oh my God, it's because she was a part of Nidhi Sanji, etc. There are plenty of people who are were Nidhi Sanji who don't want to be a part of anything anymore or don't promote themselves anymore and just do their own thing, you know, separate. Uh, and there are people like Doki Bird who has taken the line light the spotlight that she had on her for it started off as a negative spotlight because of the negative things that happened to her and you know a sympathetic spotlight into something like no it's not only sympathy now it is her own doing it is her own strength it is her own perseverance and her own content that is helping her grow and you know she has mr man who you know retired from that and is uh moving on to other things leaving her with other good uh recommendations and all the management team that she has built beneath her uh the merch team you know, there's a team also dealing with trying to get her these collaborations. All these things are helping her out in the long run. For someone who was led to believe she was unmarketable, there's a lot of people who want to collab with her. Absolutely. Don't worry, Riku. Niji lost South Korea market, so there's still North Korea. Oh, my God. Uh, they probably said she's unmarketable because many wanted to collab with her. Their other streamers are getting ignored. Yeah, they tried to knock her down, but she has brought herself back up. And everyone who is a Dragoon should be proud of Doki Bird, who has done so well in marketing herself and so well in creating amazing content for everybody. I want everyone to, uh, of course, give Sayu a bit of love because she deserves it. And she is someone who has worked her butt off after leaving Nidhi Sanji to be her own person. At this point, do not judge her by what's happened in Nidhi Sanji. Do not judge her by her past. It has been over a year since that stuff has happened. She has proven time and time again that she is not the person that she was in Nidhi Sanji. She has changed, advanced, uh, matured, whatever you want to call it. She has changed. So let's look, take a look at what she's saying right here. I'll be honest. I know I'm not even working as hard as I should or could be, but I'm so tired of trying. And this is because of all the negative thing that happened after Nidhi Sanji, people giving up on her, friends or th people she thought were friends saying, yeah, I can be your friend in private, but I can't do it in public because it would look bad for me. Uh, all the things that you've done would look bad for me. And that is not something that I am. I'm not that type of person. Um, I am not the type of person to do that. I'm not the type of person to be that way with others. Be that way and just, you know, abandon somebody for something negative they did. I will take breaks from talking to people. I'm not going to lie because I am, you know, like I mentioned before, I have my autism. I have anxiety, like a, a large anxiety disorder. I also have depression. I have all these things that hit me. That's why I can sympathize a lot with Sayu. I have all these things that hit me and sometimes I get so anxious and whatever, I just need a break and I let them know I'm going to be taking a break, but uh, it's never for, you know, what they've done or who they are. Honestly, I don't think I'll ever reach the happiness that I want in our current world. We struggle so much for so little. I'm not someone who thinks it is worth it even half the time. So I really respect those who will still struggle against the odds. Regardless, you're so strong. And so are you, Sayu. You're not going to be watching my stuff. Most people don't watch my stuff because, you know, a lot of people don't like news VTubers. They believe we only peddle drama and things like that. Although I try to always bring positive sides to everything and be as objective as I can. But this, I think, has a lot to do with... If she is, if she is like me, this is, of course, making a lot of assumptions. And you know what to say about assumptions? It makes an A out of you and me. So uh, I, I'm making a lot of assumptions, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but there may be 
underlying things like you know depression and other things caused by the situation that she had because you can have onset of depression caused by your situation or you can have it just because of a biochemical thing that's going on in your brain since you were five like myself um yeah you heard that right i've had it since i was five um Pure speculation, though. I think her trip to Shanghai is not what she expected. The company she's going to be working for might hurt her again. The history of said company was dug up in the sub before, but OP retracted some of the statements regarding the CEO of the company. But it's kind of weird. In my opinion, please, please do not work with Chinese companies. And I myself am Chinese, especially when the Chinese over there are actively against the Japanese, even openly, going so far as to berate and assault them in public while others praise them for it. Yeah, that's not good. Um, nationalism is rampant there. I can't say... I share the mainstream ideology with most people here. I struggle a lot to deal with it. Yeah, it's insane. It's come to a point that it's even afraid to go there myself for transit since they also target Filipinos due to the news heard from the OFWs, offshore Filipino workers in China proper. So yeah, there's a lot of that kind of stuff going on. Very relatable once you experience the constant mistreatment, whether at school or workplace, it will haunt your dreams for a long time, constantly reminding you that in fueling the imposter syndrome, making it hard to stay motivated for things you want to accomplish. Very true. And not to mention her haters that can't move on and attack her and bring forth more drama. And the other thing she has mentioned is that there are people out there who she doesn't negatively say anything against. But she says there are people who now, even after a year of being gone from Niji Sanji, will not collab with her for the things that happened while she was in Niji Sanji. They do not forget who she was and they do not, you know, try to see who she is now, which is the important part. And I know I'm rambling a little bit, but it really irks me when people judge you based on something that happened in the past. You apologize for you changed for the better because she's changed for the better. It's been over a year now. She's changed. She's shown that she's changed. She's not done the same, you know, type of jokes or anything like that. She's tried to stay, stay as squeaky clean without, you know, changing who she is. Still, she has people who will not collab with her, who will not even talk to her publicly because of the backlash that they fear. I don't fear any such backlash because I already have a lot of it. I am a synchronite. I am someone who follows Sayu. I am someone who is following her with bated breath and hoping for the best for her. That's why I'm happy that she's going to be having her 3D. And she's moving to NOA Talents, which is an agency that she's using as an MCN. That's a Chinese company that they're mentioning. She is using her lawyer through this. She is having her lawyer deal with a lot of these things. So she is doing it the correct way. Hopefully it goes well for her and hopefully nothing negative comes from this. But, you know, it. I do sympathize and empathize because of the, the way that it's gone for me with this. Although she is several orders of magnitude larger than me. So I don't know exactly what she's going through, but I can empathize a lot with it. Welcome back, everybody, to the next VTuber Showcase. This is for Lud Mila, Lud Mila VT. This is a 18 plus uh, creator and they do work on YouTube, Twitch, and of course, Twitter right here. Now YouTube currently has 10.6K subscribers. Um, I'm just showing you that I do everybody of every single size. If you are wanting to have a VTuber showcase, I will do it for you uh, because I want to showcase every side of the VTuber sphere, whether big, small, or whatever. They are doing um, audio role plays that, uh, they do a lot of a lot of audio role plays. It looks like that's what they're doing primarily on their YouTube side, which makes sense because you have to cater yourself to a specific audience that you've already had. Like they've been doing this for a long time. There's no reason for them to change because it has gotten them views in the past. It has got you know gotten them continuous views. So of course they're not going to change that. And this is a niche that I haven't seen very many VTubers specifically i've seen youtubers and stuff but not very many vtubers go into this niche this is a good niche for her to be a part of we're doing ludmila here of the actual streams of course um she's been doing uh shante half genie hero uh wife quest fire emblem engage other things like that and um when you have uh a channel like yourself, like in anything is ASMR related, anything like that. Sometimes the gaming doesn't do so well, but she's able to do what she wants and what she desires to do, which is what I always recommend as a VTuber you do. Yes, you may not get as many views. Yes, you may not, you know, grow as much, but you do what you love and then you don't work a day in your life as the saying goes. Let's take a look at their, uh, you know, actual content here. She's perfect. Let me make it accurate, please. She's messing with the body style and everything like that. So that's always good to see. Um, and then we have her about section right here. It says, I'm quite chill with rules. However, my mods can be protective sometimes about me. You're actually reading this anyways. I'm Ludmilla. 
VTuber streams mostly tactical games and RPGs. I love Fire Emblem and Wizard 101 with all my heart. So she has catered her VTuber uh, Twitch to gaming and her VTuber YouTube to something else. Like myself, I do a lot of gaming on my VTuber Twitch and I do more you know, news here primarily. So that is very commendable. Uh, thank you, Ludmilla, for being a part of the VTuber Showcase. I do wish you the very best and continued growth because you and every single VTuber I've ever come into contact with deserve the growth that you get and deserve much more eyes on your videos. All for right now, of course, comment, like, and subscribe down below. Thank you for being here. Of course, I love having the conversations with you guys. I love having these things with you guys, and I do appreciate it whenever you guys do comment. Take a look at my description for my socials. There's a Discord, there's Twitter, there's other places that you can check me out, Twitch, etc. And also check on your screen right now because there might be a video that you might enjoy. Thank you.